Welcome back to coverage of the Neon Dynasty Championship, everybody. We are in the upper final. One of these players is going to be potentially our champion, Mani. I'm Ailey Lodi alongside Mani Davuti. And before we jump into this matchup, let's talk a little bit about it because Esper Clerics and Mardu Midrange haven't butted heads all that much this weekend with Mardu Midrange coming out on top. So what sort of game plan do you think we have to see from Esper Clerics to get over this Mardu Midrange deck? Yeah, all that much is actually maybe even a bit of an understatement, considering two people brought Esper <laughs> Clerics to this event. I don't think many of us had Esper Clerics on our upper final Radars. bingo card at the start <laughs> of the weekend. And yeah, Yudai Miyano doing what I think he expected to do by bringing Clerics. He speed up on a lot of runes, a lot of mono white aggro, did pretty well against the Rakdos Sacrifice deck, but... One loss in alchemy in the Swiss was to Grixis midrange. Yeah, he overcame Orzhov Venture in this top eight, but this Mardu midrange deck is sort of a different beast, and I'm worried about the chances of Clerics going up against this sort of engine. We've seen what the Mardu midrange deck is capable of in the last round, so let's see how Esper Clerics in the hands of Yudai Miyano fares against Zach Dunn's Mardu midrange. Both of these players in their first top finish looking to secure that championship match berth. So let's jump into the game, take a look at what the players are working with. Let's rock and roll. Now, before we do get deep into this game, friends, just want to remind everybody that we are a remote production. So we did have a little bit of issues getting Zach Dunn's feed to us. We're at the mercy of the internet around the world. So we will be hanging out with Yudai Miyano throughout this matchup. So we get to we get to play a bit of a guessing game here, Mani. Yeah, it, it's always unfortunate when we're working with single perspective magic, but it is fun as a caster to not have mm. that perfect information that we're normally dealing with and try to just not only put ourselves in Yudai Miyano's seat and see what life is like from the perspective of clerics, but also try to imagine what we think is in Zach's hand. Exactly right. Very good draw here. Bright, line, bright climb pathway, excuse me. This allows Yudai Miyano to get double Lunar veterans down on the battlefield. So next turn, if it's a voice of the blessed time, woo, buddy, there's going to be plenty of counters rocking around. Yeah, as powerful as Takanuma is, you definitely want to be making your first few white sources of mana in this Esper Clerics deck. Finding double Lunark Veteran to start off and being able to go into either Righteous Valkyrie or Voice of the Blessed and just start this life gain off early, get those counters on the voice and put yourself in that early commanding position is really nice. Yeah, the other side of things though... Uh, that's a very good looking curve. I would be super incentivized to just go, okay, Righteous Valkyrie into Captain, and then Voice of the Less can come down whenever he runs out of stuff to do, really. Just think about all the counters you're missing, though, Ailey. Like, I know. Just, like, really think about all of those counters as Yudai is thinking about all of those counters, Ailey. <laughs> In the end, he's going to make the most mana efficient play and get Righteous Valkyrie ticking, so that's two extra life as soon as a third creature hits, but this looks like a Vanishing Verse gonna take care of that. We could've been very close to 27 by the next turn, so a little unfortunate, but you know that this mid-range deck is gonna be packing all sorts of removal pre-board. Yeah, looking at Zach's list, one of the big things I notice is there's no Meat Hook Massacres in the main deck. So if Yudai is able to get this board out of hand, the same catch-up mechanics that we've seen in some of the other mid-range decks isn't available in this first game so Zach is really going to be relying on making sure he gets some creatures or cards like wedding announcement down just to be on the board and make sure that Yudai doesn't get out of hand too quickly ah oh, this is so unfortunate if there was one extra white source down we could have gone voice of the blessed or cleric of life spawn any combination of those two cards and just information more counters going <laughs> Information, yes. Hey, could we see the other side of the battlefield, please? Yeah, please. You die? You die? Please? Kindly. Do us a solid just... here, buddy? Nope. Yep. Yeah. Give me a peek uh, the you're the best. Let's, Let's go. have a look. <laughs> Whoa, that's a lot of removal. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Terrible. Okay, that's, that's a lot of removal. Uh, I don't know if the adventure is doing 
particularly that much against this voice of the blessed so i think getting rid of the bigger death touch creature and just going all right i'm gonna try to go wide on this board you can one for one me with those vanishing verses i don't really care about this adventure let's play this game love that decision from you and now we at least know some of what zach's working with oh yeah lunark veterans he won't be too sad to lose these if they swing in here, if to lose it to this little human token off of the wedding announcement. But decides, you know what, actually, I'd like to get some dumb life gain triggers going. I'd like this cleric to be enormous as well as the voice of the blessed to get ticking, so... Zach's just gonna pass the turn back. Two pieces of removal in hand. Miscate pathways are gonna come on down in case we do find the glass pool mimic. And the nice thing about the Lunark, excuse me, the uh, Cleric of Life's Bond is uh, Vanishing Verse can't touchy that one. So at least one of these little, I don't know, could we call them bears? They're big bears. They'll survive. Yeah, I think Cleric is definitely the not end game plan here for Yudai, but looking at the hand that features all three copies of Vanishing Verse from Zach is, that is... Surprise! <laughs> Alright, hold that thought. This is a really unfortunate, unknown card for <laughs> Zach Dunn to have here. Yudai had pretty close to perfect information, having Elise Spellbinder the previous turn, but what he didn't know about was perhaps one of the most important cards of the matchup. Yeah. Wandering Emperor. Preserving the life total. And getting rid of the evasive creature, Lunark Veterans. Gonna trigger twice there for us. And Cleric of Life's Bond starts the counter train. What Yudai has right now is the luxury of time. Time to find something like a Pyre of Heroes. Time to find something like more Inquisitor Captains. Could draw the Glass Pool Mimics now that he has that Miscate Pathway online able to play the glass pool mimic from hand copying inquisitor captain to still get the trigger uh it doesn't matter that it is a copy you have to still cast it from hand so good top decks available for yudai has perfect information again and knows that i have to fight through two vanishing verses and if i do i'll be in a really comfortable position yeah yudai is possibly hoping that Zack is just going to fire off these Vanishing Verses on one of the creatures already out there, so Voice of the Blessed survives, but I think now that Righteous Valkyrie's been drawn, Voice of the Blessed is just going to be some cannon fodder, pretty much. Yeah, I think we're going to see the title of cannon fodder get passed around here like hot potato <laughs> until uh, Yudai decides what is going to be my ultimate creature that I want to survive, because... We've seen one Vanishing Verse go, two more in hand. After that, the only real removal the Zach has available are the Wandering Emperors and one Power Word kill. So fighting through this removal bit by bit is going to be really good for Yudai. Just has to hope the top of the library behaves now for him. Like you mentioned, another Inquisitor Captain, a Glasspool Mimic. Provided this one doesn't die, would be a real nice find for him too. As it stands, the two two twos can jump in the way here of the captain and get this creature off the battlefield. Yeah, Yuda doesn't really have a good all-out attack available to him. Even if he was to attack with everything and Zack didn't use a Vanishing Verse, the Wandering Emperor would only be taking one, so wouldn't be able to get it off the board. Instead, just slowly chipping away at this board position, dropping a little bit of bait. I think Voice of the Blessed is a really powerful card, so you, Zach can't really allow it to survive for an extra turn cycle. And Yudai knows that. This is all sort of part of the game plan there uh as unfortunately that land oh the yudai was on the verge of just being off it there Yeesh. oh session okay. worthy discard there righteous valkyrie getting taken as we mentioned unfortunately no third land no third white source to get that down yeah and that that's a conscious decision that Yudai had made over a couple of turns. Uh, we saw him play uh, that Grim Climb pathway on the black side, just to be able to have a black land without being forced to play Takanuma, was forced to play it anyways. Then the Mistgate pathway, because he wanted to have a access to a blue source, and this is not a bad draw. A powerful multicolored card here in the aura is a nice way to play around this Vanishing Verse. So definitely not overly unhappy to see that 
come off the top, but still, you have to feel like Zach Dunn is in a really nice position with that wedding announcement flipped, Wandering Emperor is still active, City Soccer Connoisseur has Death Touch to trade with anything, and there's even a blood token in case Zach's hand starts getting stale. Yep, Zach's certainly in a more commanding position, even though Eudialimus has doubled the life. This Aura Skyclave apparition will get to hang around as he is multicolored, so... Zack's going to have to find another piece of removal, and when Aura dies, I like to call him Aura the Explorer, that, that's when the he one. dies, well, that's the one that can get rid of him. Yeah, He'll would... go and fetch something uh, a little cheaper from the graveyard, so. Unfortunately, though, Skyclave Apparition is the piece of exile that Zack Dunn needed there. Yeah, if you and I wanted to concede last turn, that feeling must be more amplified now because this is going from bad to worse every turn. And Oof. all of the yep. creatures you and I would have wanted to clone with that Glass Bull Mimic already gone means the Mardu Midrange deck takes a very commanding game one. It does indeed. So let's take a look at the sideboard here as uh, we're going to go into game number two. Just a reminder, if you're joining us, this is the upper final. Zach Dunn and Yudai Miyato looking to make their way into the championship match. The loser will be heading down to the lower bracket to fight it out there with the other participants. Yeah, we do see some copies of Duress being brought in here from the Esper Cleric deck. Uh, we see the auras being taken out. A little awkward, obviously, you do like multicolor threats against the deck that is bringing uh, cards like Vanishing Verse, but Unfortunately, it might just be a little too slow considering you're paying four mana and then there's so many exile effects waiting on the other side, cards like Skyclave Apparition. So even if Aura itself doesn't get exiled, if your opponent is exiling a lot of your earlier threats, you might not be able to get full value from its ability. So I understand why Yudai is going for this exact build and it seems very much like trying to play a bit more reactive game plan, having those spell pierces, the negate, as well as the duresses. Yeah, the, uh, the game plan with the Pyre of Heroes <laughs> kind of relies on your stuff not getting exiled, and this Marty Midrange deck is packing plenty of exile removal effects. So I'm curious if we'll see the Pyre come out, or if Yudai is still pretty happy to have those in there as a just-in-case. All right, so Ailey, now this is... I, I'm not going to speak for Yudai here, but I've been in this position before where I've brought a deck that I tested pretty extensively for a tournament. Mm -hmm. I was ready for the top three or four decks that I expected in the field. I knew how I was going to sideboard. And then I run into the deck that I've just never seen before, like this Mardu <laughs> Midrange deck. And I don't have a sideboard strategy, and it comes side to sideboard, and I'm just like, all right, what do I cut? What do I cut? Shave <laughs> one here, shave one here, put something back in, reconsider. It, it, the little song and dance of just trying to yeah. figure out how do I get these numbers to line up and <laughs> try to attack this deck in a reasonable way. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, from Zach Dunn's side of things too, I don't think anyone playing a mid-range deck would have pegged an Esper Cleric's deck to make it this far. You know, being only two copies of the deck of the tournament. You wouldn't even expect to face it, yet here we are. So, adapt, yeah, the... improvise, overcome. Exactly. The nice part is, at least the Cleric deck has a pretty reasonable, streamlined game mm -hmm. plan that you're used to testing against. It's very much like the white creature decks, just yeah. a little bit bigger. So you can at least plan to shift that sideboard plan a bit that way. But for Yudai, it's just completely different and this hand not that bad you see a curve yes you're not getting any of the life gain shenanigans online but the life gain shenanigans aren't as important against this mardu midrange deck as just having access to resources and yudai has had some really nice resources already voice of the blessed gets to live for the time being but i've got a sneaking suspicion zach dunn's not gonna let it get in here for an attack yeah, yeah, I see you, bud. That negates no blue mana, yeah. though. And no blue mana, but he had the blue mana. He just played the Sanctum maybe a little too fast, as now you see the frustration. And if Zack is able to take this window to resolve something like Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Yudai mm -hmm. is going to be really, really kicking himself for that one. It's like you can see his hand, Monty. How did you Almost. 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 
So close. <laughs> if Yudai gives me a spellbinder here, then I could actually see his hand, but no such luck this time. Uh, we'll get him next time. Dawnbringer Cleric, the one-off, able to destroy target enchantments, so no draw and discard this time around for Zach Dunn as City Stalker Connoisseur hits the battlefield and now there's a decision to be made. What is going bye-bye? It's going to be the Skyclave Apparition because Glasspool Mimic, as we've seen, can copy the Inquisitor Captain and get some more value out of the deck. Yeah, still real, real good. So I, I, as good as Skyclave Apparition is here and as much as you want to get rid of that Connoisseur and maybe start attacking, what you really want to do is copy this Captain, try to find an Elite Spellbinder if you can and get a peek at nice. that Nice, how about two? No choice here. So we get a peek and Yudai gets a peek. And Thank you, Yudai. Oh, both of those are pretty spicy, but yeah, I think getting rid of the Fable, making it cost five here, means that it'll take up Zach's entire turn to develop that if he wants. Inquisitor Captain offering the trade here. So just a connoisseur. It'll happily trade. And Lunarg Veteran coming down post-combat. Missed out on a couple life gain points there, but doesn't really matter at this rate. Yeah, and I think this is actually pretty decent for Yudai. He's in a position where Zach's hand didn't do that much to interact with him. If Zach taps out for Fable of the Mirror Breaker, well now Yudai is in a position where he can keep up this negate for the next few turns and try to snap the next piece of removal mm -hmm. that Zach finds. Getting in there in the air with this elite spellbinder to put on pressure. Can even attack with the Inquisitor Captain if he wants, just offering it up for one of these shaman tokens. But I think this is a position where Yudai is semi happy with his hand, though Zach is going to get to filter through some cards here thanks to that fable, as well as the blood token that he still has. Yeah, we saw Yudai shake his head a little bit there, so perhaps just unhappy with his sequencing the previous turn. A lot of things being utilized over this weekend, and especially considering the time zone differences, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of strain on the old brain, so just stay focused there, my friend. You're in a good position. Yeah, and you know, the good thing is this is a double elimination tournament, so fortunately for the player that loses here, they are not out. They get another chance at it through that lower bracket, though I think for both these players, wanting to take a bit of a break this afternoon as we go through the lower bracket to catch up, just secure their spot in that championship match and feel like they're in a good position to take it all down. Wedding announcement hits the battlefield. Skyclave Apparition unfortunately can't be negated. And I'm guessing that's going to pick an elite spellbinder at the sky. Or is Cleric of Life's Bond more of a concern here? I think you want to take down the spellbinder. You want to just preserve your life total. Right now, Yudai doesn't have good attacks through this board as Zach disagrees. And this means that Yudai is able to keep up the air pressure and now with spell pierce hmm. can drop this righteous Valkyrie. So not a bad position here for Yudai Miana. Not at all. Spellbinder gets him for another three points of damage down to 12. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is going to flip, and there is the reflection of Kiki Jiki, who can get up to some nonsense next turn with a Skyclave Apparition. So, Zach, happy to take that extra three in the air, and will likely be looking to copy that Skyclave Apparition. Yeah, Zach, and his, Zach is in a position where if Yudai doesn't answer, answer this reflection of Kiki Jiki mm -hmm. in the next turn, he can just start turning all of Yudai's creatures into generic illusions. Ooh. Ouch. Yeah, that advantage bar is going to swing right around the other way there, Ailey. Hi, this... Lisa. Lisa, it's your birthday here as <laughs> Zach is in an... <laughs> excellent position now has the lisa surviving has the reflection plus skyclave combo and yudai is looking at this hand of negate and spell peers and wondering where all everything went wrong and you know not everything can be attributed back to that but definitely not playing that blue land on the third turn has at least affected the outcome of this game somewhat oh if only negate was a disdainful stroke huh would be pretty nice Oh, it would be pretty nice, be pretty, unfortunately. Not in the pretty list. Pretty nice. Yeah, just mousing over everything that Zach Dunn has presented and another creature bit of removal. Who needs to copy Skyclave Apparition when you have more copies in hand? And yeah, this is... Oof. Bad news bears. 
Bad news bears is right. Yudai does have the option to use Takanuma. Go yeah. get either a Skyclave apparition if you would like to get rid of this reflection of Kikijiki, or an Inquisitor captain thinking that he's pretty far behind. And you know, he's not wrong. He is very, very far behind here. All right, well, there's an answer to the wedding he announcement, that but far he's had enough. Here. He's had enough. Zach Dunn, congratulations, sir. You are going on to our championship final match.